Today, July 4th, 2024, Happy Independence Day, by the way, is also my Freedom Day because today is my fifth year after leaving the Marine Corps and becoming a nasty civilian. So in this video, I'm going to discuss my transition process and how I landed the job I have right now. Of course, we're going to talk about my VA disability from leaving the Marine Corps, which coincidentally led to the creation of this YouTube channel. So three things there. And then finally, because I'm feeling a bit sentimental today, I have a me box right here, right next to me, two of them that I haven't opened up in a really long time. Well, I guess five years worth. Um, and some of the knickknacks I have from the Marine Corps are behind me. So I'm going to just show you what's going on. Okay. Show you the things that I have, but that's towards the end. The good meat is going to be up front. So let's just, I hope you enjoy this, right? This is going to be a get to know me type video versus your normal informational video that I normally do. So I left the Marine Corps in 2019. And during my time, I started out in the infantry. Okay. I've deployed many times, and in fact, being away from home and seeing the effect it had on my son is what ultimately led me to choose to leave that life behind me. After the infantry, I became a PSYOP Marine, and at that time, it was not a primary MOS. It was just a three-year stint. You do it, and then you go back to the fleet, and it was supposed to be a change of pace. Well... I would end up deploying even more as a psyoper than I did in the infantry, but I genuinely enjoyed every single moment of both the infantry life and the psyop life. Side note, the psyop life is much, much, much easier, okay? Now, when I left the Marine Corps as a psyoper, I had a clearance and tons of experience from all my deployments, but more so, the psyop community is pretty small and a dude I deployed with would end up being at the place that I'm employed at right now. He was friends with a hiring manager. So when I applied, I already had that network, that networking piece there. So networking is a huge part of your transition process. If you're so active duty right now, network, network, network. If you're not active duty and you've been out for a few years, still network. LinkedIn's a great site to do that. Now, my TRS was absolutely terrible, and TRS is Transition Readiness Seminar. That's what you'll have in the Navy and the Marine Corps. Um, the Army and Air Force have TAPS, Transition Assistance Program. Those names may have changed the last five years. I'm not sure, but my TRS was terrible, and the only thing I really came out of that was I had a resume. I also met the VSO, but that part will come after this. So I had my resume, and I started to apply. My goal was always to become a government employee for the federal government, but that wasn't the job I got. Although I applied to many federal positions, I ended up with a contracting position, which is why I live very close to D.C. There are tons of government positions up here. The contract position was in training and education for PSYOP and a few other d d disciplines, which we won't really get into, um, you know, the weeds of what PSYOP actually is. Well, three and a half years later, a government position opened up in my office. I applied, and that is the position I have right now. When I applied, I had three and a half years of experience in that same role. And if you're looking for a government position, my advice to you right now is to start contracting first, contracting for the same role or similar roles, use that as a job to build up that experience and then when government positions open up when people retire or to be honest with you when people die is when government positions open up that's how that's how pretty much most people become federal employees at least within the dod they start out contracting first so right now i am a federal employee for the department of the army i'm a dac department of the army civilian the same job I did as a contractor is what I'm doing right now, just as a guppy. For anyone, for anyone who cares, I'll leave a link to my resume if you want to use that as a template for yourself, if you're in the market of building a resume. To be honest with you, getting a job after the Marine Corps was not that hard, but that was only because I had the PSYOP background and that skill set, and I am forever grateful for to the Marine Corps to equip me with that skill set that could be used on the outside. If I was just infantry, 
I'd probably be a police officer um, or security guard or some other job, which none of those are. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my uh, cup of tea personally. Now, when I left the Marine Corps, I also started to use my GI Bill. And I don't want to get into PSYOP heavy stuff, but it involves multiple disciplines, okay? It's entwined in what we call information operations. And one of those disciplines is cyber. So when I started my undergrad, I chose cyber policy, which is as dry as that sounds. It actually really sucked, but I graduated. That's what that thing is right there. That's my undergrad for cyber policy. Um, so now I teach information operations, PSYOP integration, and cyber integration courses. If you want to know more of that side of me, follow me on LinkedIn. That link is somewhere on the channel. Side note, the GI Bill is hands down the most slept on benefit that we have as post 9 11 veterans. Now, my VA disability journey, just as every single veteran ever, my TRS course was absolute garbage, so I had no idea about V8 benefits with the exception of who the VSO was on Quantico. I had absolutely zero, zero idea on what to claim or how that process works. I went into the DAV's office on Quantico, if that was the VSO, and to be honest with you, he just sucked, okay? I'm not saying the DAV sucks. They, I'm sure they do great things. What I'm telling you is in 2019, the VSO rep for the DAV on Quantico was dog water, okay? There's no other way to put it. That's just the fact. Um, he was well into his 70s, okay? He couldn't turn on his computer. He didn't explain anything to me. He didn't ask me any questions without or with the exception of, hey, what do you want to submit for? I had no idea what I could, and I had no idea what I wanted to submit, and I didn't know what I didn't know, and... He became frustrated with me and he was mad um, and it was just not a pleasant experience whatsoever. So ne needless to say, nothing came out of that. I just turned around and walked out of the office. Now, there was a sign for the DVS, which is Department of Veteran yeah. Services for Virginia, which we now which I now know is a state VSO. I didn't know what that was at first. Now, this dude was awesome. He was frustrated when I told him I didn't know what to submit. But he sat me down and he asked me a ton of questions. The only thing I gave him was my DD-214. And he asked me questions about my mental health, any surgery I've had, or any pain that I have. He would end up submitting for those and a few others. And I went out about my day. Months later, probably about six months later, I got my decision. But during that time, I had thought about what I experienced in the Marine Corps. And I had an idea of what claims I wanted to submit next. So I went into that same guy's office and sat down with him. Only this time, it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good appointment at all. I asked him, uh, <clears throat> I asked him about submitting for back pain and a few other things. And he told me that I should be happy for the rating I got. And that was pretty much it. I did take his word at first, but then I started doing my own research and looking to the VA from the Googles. OK, YouTube started throwing channels my way. Now, I'm not going to call any channel out whatsoever, but I just didn't like how the information was being delivered um, from from the platform. Now, from there, though, I did learn about 38 CFR. And for me personally, that was enough. That's all I needed. That's how I found the Reddit page and used their master condition list, which also led me to how to read 38 CFR and more importantly, the M21 TAC one. Now, I am a nerd and I can read like no other, especially when it comes to policy, hence the cyber policy degree, which is um, will make you shoot yourself. OK, I also retain most of everything I read. And that's that's the God's honest truth. I can't explain it from there. That's how I got my claims together. I gathered my evidence, submitted a few more claims and boom, that was it. OK, now in the midst of all that. Um, one of my really good friends quit his job and his now wife did the same thing to start full time as, as content creators. And I thought they were absolute crazy. Well, they're doing very, very well right now. But seeing them do that got me thinking that I should do YouTube for veterans. 
Mainly, I wanted to be a younger voice for all veterans, but specifically my generation, which is that post 9-11 baby generation. At this same time, one of my friends signed with a company that charges six times the increase, and he was talking to me about them, and I looked at his claims, and all that company did was simply submit the increase. There wasn't a DBQ with it. There wasn't a consultation about how the CMP exam is going to go. It was just submit the increase, nothing else. He was awarded 100%, right? Had to pay a lot of money. And that just really made me mad because there was a predatory aspect to it that personally I, I wasn't down for. So my mission on here became to educate and inform the veteran community to ultimately disrupt the market against claims consulting companies. You can agree to that or not. It doesn't matter. And I really don't care. Okay. I try my absolute best to provide information for veterans to be dangerous when it comes to submitting claims for the VA. If you as a veteran want to use a company, go ahead and do that. It's just my opinion that you don't need them and they're simply taking your money from you. I don't want to get into it deeper than that. You can look at the rest of the channel if you want. Now, my YouTube has grown and I never knew monetizing was a thing. But once that happened, I've definitely put more effort into this YouTube thing. Everything on my channel is free and everything on my website is free. I am tra transparent about every revenue source. So if you're curious about all that, check out the website. I do live Q&As and answer questions, all questions. But those who donate will always have their questions answered no matter what right then and there. I also have a membership here on YouTube and a Discord server where members can ask me questions anytime throughout the day. And I will answer each and every question on that Discord in full all the time. So if you want to become a member, hit join and be sure to link your YouTube account to Discord. Join the Discord and all the directions are right there. It's super easy, I promise. And I say that because after I talk smack about claims and soldier companies, I already know someone's going to talk about Google AdSense, um, but Google AdSense doesn't take money from veterans' future benefits. Food for thought. Now, the moment that we've been waiting for and something that I'm excited for myself is this box. Now, I'm going to start with things I have in the background, and then I'm going to go through what I have in this box, okay? Um, hopefully, the audio stays. Oh, I'm just going to kind of move around and not edit this at all. Bear with me here, okay? So first, I have books. All of these books, I absolutely love. I've read all, all of the books I have up here. My favorite book, and I'll show you, is right here. The Return of George Washington. I read this while I was in the Marine Corps. Absolute one of my favorite books. It talks about the United States post-Revolutionary War, pre the presidency of Washington. Um, Washington definitely understands, you know, what we would call um, political influence. This is a great book. This is the birthplace of America, American politics right here. Hands down, one of my favorite books. Now, my second favorite book is definitely Marine Corps oriented. And that is right. Where's it at? Uh, with the old breed. This is why this book right here is why I joined the Marine Corps in the first place. It follows Eugene Sledge. Um, he was a mortarman. I became a mortarman because of this book. Seriously, I read this in high school. If you have not read with the old breed or you're not a reader, you want to watch TV, go watch the Pacific. OK, I think it's on Netflix now. It's an HBO series. Um, in my opinion, and I've read a lot of war books, this is the best account of war from a Marine's soldier's front, from, from a service member's perspective. Not the high up mumbo jumbo general this, general that. This right here is what war is. Um, absolute great book. I'm not going to put that back. Now, this is my me corner right here. I'll start with this. I took this picture um, in Afghan. It's the U.S. flag, the Afghan flag, and the Marine Corps flag. I actually have all three of these flags hanging up in my garage right now. Um, I am very proud of my flags. I also collect flags. 
I was a Mormon. This here is a picture of an Afghan with 81. So there's some some homies there. I won't say their names, but uh, I miss you. You know who you are. Okay. This is my patch I wore when I was in 3rd Battalion, 9th Marines. I'm covering up my kill number. Um, if you know what a kill number is, you know why. I, that's something I should co cover up. This right here is a NAM. This is just a cool picture that came with it, but this is the NAM. Um, long story short, I made a expedient antenna to push some PSYOP stuff. And then um, I also shot down an ISIS drone. That's what that's for. Definitely one of my proudest moments ever was right here. These are pictures of the homies. Um, I won't say their names, but just know that I love you and prayers to you and your family, okay? This is the mortar section, 2-9 Echo right here, baby. That's a 29 Palms, a disgusting place. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to put all that back, which sucks. Okay, I'm only gonna talk about the ones I got in the Marine Corps here. Um, a few of these I've gotten as a federal employee. As you can see, the U rank structure might look a little weird to you. That's because yes, I was NJP'd in Korea. I got really, really drunk. Um, maybe that's a story for another time, okay? But hey, I made it back got out as a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. My favorite coins, hands down, the OG, I hope that works. Is that gonna work? No, it's not, it's too dark. So this is the third battalion, ninth Marine coin. Um, maybe I can zoom in on it. Third battalion, ninth Marines. This is the OG three nine symbol. I'm always gonna keep that. This is a Afghan coin, right? Um, we'll skip that one. Second Marine Division, baby. Second Mardiv, what's up? East Coast. Those are my favorite coins. And of course, 8324, if you know, you know. Okay, these are my coins here. This beautiful Etel is chipped. You can see it's chipped here. Um, this is the tool I use in Syria to dig holes and sleep in. Every time we'd move, I broke it, and so I kept the e-tool. Now, fun fact, and I won't say his name, but I ended up asking a friend for his e-tool when I left the Marine Corps, and I told him I'd buy him a new one, which I did, except for the one I bought him was from China, and it was like this big. Needless to say, he couldn't turn that into Sith issue, and he had to pay for it out of pocket. So to you, buddy, I'm sorry, but uh, you're the reason I'm able to keep this. So keep that in mind. Um, these are my medals. Okay, there's two rows here. Um, ask of notes. Let's see if I can open this thing up. Dang, it's a of note, right? There's the Afghan medal. There's NATO. That was for Haiti, I believe. Ketchup mustard. That's Korea. Good conduct. Look at that. I got NJP, Article 15, and got two good conducts. That's whatever participation that's the nam and this is for syria oir okay um this sentimental value here it's actually broken i glued it together i had dinner with a group of friends in oki and this is a salt salt or pepper i'm not sure which one um but we stole it it looks like it was salt sorry sam's sam's restaurant in okinawa i sorry Cup here from Green Wolf Tactical. They are the ones who made this shirt and these hats, okay? Now, I'm doing a member sale of these shirts right now, actually. We won't be making these again. We have a new logo. And so once the member sale is finished, I'll open it up to everyone else, and then we're going to get some new shirts with a new logo. These books here are replicas of George Washington's diaries, four volumes. Um, I've read them, and you wanna talk about a dry read? It's these bad boys right here. Now, I'm not gonna show you all my Star Wars stuff. Um, just a few things I really love. If you know the channel, you know this is my coffee mug. This thing is sick. I always drink coffee out of this. Um, I have all the, Darth Maul is hands down my favorite ever. 
And so I just have a bunch of random Darth Maul stuff. Like there's a Darth Maul bust here. So whatever. Let's see. This animal can is Smoke Pit Fairy Tales. Smoke Pit Fairy Tales. Um, he is a he was a Marine, started as combat camera, also did PSYOP, um, left the Marine Corps, and started an entire series. This is just the first six books. Um, I believe there's 10 books now, maybe 12. But Trip Ainsworth, you can look up Smoke Pit Fairy Tales. It's an awesome, funny book. Seriously, this is awesome. Okay, now let's get on this me locker here. Okay. Here we go. Um, this says United States Marine Corps on it. Okay. How should we do this? Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll turn it. Hold on. Let me turn this thing. I'll turn it and just start taking stuff out. Okay. Man. This is a Thule. Okay. If you're a warfighter, you know what a Thule is. It is the Tactical Handbook Unit Leader Small. It has your nine line reporting, your IED reporting, um, call for fire. Okay. ALDEF. Observer ID, warning order, location, description, effects, and fire control. Wow. Okay. Um, just all kinds of how to make a range card. Every warfighter need, needs a thole. Okay. I remember we would take what we needed out, like the call for fire. You can tell how this one is not as white as the other ones because we always had that thing on a center flag. But there's that. Um, oh, one thing I do want to mention. This is fan made from a veteran of the sh of the channel. And so are these coasters. So thank you very much. You know who you are. This is a PSYOP coaster here. And this coaster has the CivDiv logo on it with my name. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, what else? All right, this is a, I'm going to call it a scarf. It's still has the afghan dust on it which is gross um it's not a scarf it's called something i forgot what it's called i apologize but that's what this is this thing is filthy dude Woo. okay um i should probably watch that woodland tags i mean a bunch of just stupid stuff desert tag with the velcro okay with my name on it french 4j right here I was in 2nd Italian 9th Marines as well, which is a part of 6th Marines. And so we had the honor, the privilege to wear the French Forget on our blues. Um, really, really terrible Psyot patch here. Should probably throw that away. I'm not. Let's see. Ooh. So this, I forgot all about this, man. I bought this, which is 9th Marines. Striking. I bought this in Korea when I was with 2-9. Um, super old patch. I bought it. Okay. At the store. At the store there on the base. Thailand patch. I did go to Thailand. And if you haven't been to Thailand, it's beautiful. I'm not going to tell you any Thailand stories. Um, I'd probably get in trouble for my wife. Here's my Libo card from Okinawa. I still got, I got, got this bad boy. I was a corporal. Hmm, this is pre-NJP. Pre-NJP right here. Beautiful thing. Oh, okay. This is just some gloves I had. I don't know which deployment it was from. Probably Syria. Maybe Afghan. I'm not sure. Okay, just take all these patches out. Korean rank. Korean rank patch. That's my name. Korean patch here. Japan patch. Korea patch. The Marines love the Pacific. And this is a Korean patch in Korean. All right. Here's a 3-9 patch. Actually, super solid quality with the OG logo on it. I'm recording, so and I'm not going to edit this out, so don't say anything. Just let you know. Forward assist. M4, big dog, right here. Forward assist. Okay. Weapons clean, cleaning kit. Bam. Got it. 
chevrons b5 type let's see this is a quran there we go it's an arabic don't mean to be dis disrespectful but i've kept this okay um here are some leaflets here uh i want to show you these Commonwealth of Kentucky patch. There we go. Man, here's a camel. You can have, you can put your hashish in here. Look at that. Nice, dude. Sweet camel. Got that one. And I think I got it in Afghan. I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. That's a nam. That wasn't anodized. I don't even know how to. Let's put this. Uh, okay, whatever. Media card. Oh, this is when we went to. No, this we were in Syria. We had a media card here. I should actually bring it into work with me. Filipino patch. Okay, sweet. Um, another camel. Look at that, dude. So I bought. I remember I bought these at the same time. I just don't know where. I want to say it was my Afghan deployment when we were coming back. I think at least. This is my original Eagle Globe and Anchor I got from boot camp. Right here. Now this thing has some sentimental value, dude. Okay. I definitely teared up whenever I finished boot camp. Staff Sergeant Macias. He was our kill hat. I'm sure he was promoted. But it's Staff Sergeant Macias from um, East pa Paris Island. If you ever watch this, I just want you to know that um, I hate you as much as I love you. I probably hate you a little bit more. It's my key card from Japan. And that's it for this box. I have a huge box over here. I'm just gonna throw this stuff back in here. Then we'll go ahead and open up the other box that has um, like clothing stuff bigger stuff these are just small little knickknacks um i should probably add some of these knickknacks to the background maybe i'll do that right after this video let's see french forge pat really really terrible forward assist here okay that's that oh yeah and this is a whole foot locker i'm not gonna open this but I kept a pair of some woodlands, apparently. Awesome. Ah, oh, look at this, dude. This is frog gear. Um, fire, retardant, something. Um, Syria, 2017. So this is my frogs from Syria. I pray that I wash those. Hopefully I did. That's not something I would do, but hopefully I did. Here's what I wore in Afghan. Nice. Get the frogs there. Oh, dude, these are blast panties. You know what blast panties are, then you're not seeing anything new. But this right here is super thick, kind of like Kevlar almost. For if you were to roll over or step on an IED, hopefully it protects your junk. Um, I guess depending on how powerful that is. So oh, this is also Afghan. Here's the boonie. Nice. Maybe we'll take off the sip dip hat and put the boonie on for the rest of this. Oh, dude, I should totally wear this for more videos. Okay. Um, boot bands. Who keeps boot bands? <laughs> All right, there's boot bands. Um, let's go ahead and just drop these below here. Boop, boop. Here's the woodland beanie. Nice. Here's a shirt. Does anything logos on it? Or nope, it's just a shirt. Olive Drab shirt. I'm hoping to make Olive Drab. Um, look at them short shorts, baby. Look at those bad boys. All right. Cover. Oh my goodness. And what's inside the cover? Your honor, courage, and commitment card. If you're a Marine, you know what this is. Honor, courage, commitment. I got this at boot camp, and I kept it in my cover to keep my 
EGA, solid. I kept it in my cupboard the entire time I was a Marine. And it's funny because I still have it in my cupboard right now. The longer you've been out, the more you miss the Marine Corps. And I'll change my battery right now. Okay, so we're back now. More Woodlands, sweet. Oh, here's the Desert Marpat, man. Woo! Kept one pair of each. That's pretty cool. McMatt belt. Ding, ding. This is a Philippine Navy, Filipino Navy PT uniform. Tank top here. And the shorts, which I've never wore these at all. But some, I guess I traded for it when we were in the Philippines. Let's see. More frog gear. This one's from Syria. I know exactly where I got these from because it was cold AF. It was in Korea. This was, we went to Korea December of 14 and left February of 15. And it was freaking cold. It's earmuffs. These are earmuffs. Okay. This hat says allergic to human. My interpreter from Thailand got me this. Apparently she thinks I'm a curmudgeon, which I guess at times I can be. Um, you know, sometimes I don't want to talk to people. Sometimes I get really irritated, especially at really stupid comments on YouTube. Let's see. This is a beanie I got from Korea, Korean patch. Again, it was cold. I was going to trade anything for it. Got this re as a boot. I got this really stupid headband from Japan. Okay. Uh, these are our Korean gloves. Got these in Korea. Apparently, I was desperate enough to trade watches or shirts or whatever I had. Korean Marine socks right here. Rock MC, Republic of Korea Marine Corps. That's pretty cool, actually. That's pretty dope. Pretty dope, dude. Okay, this is... What is this? The shirt from the Philippines. It says... We got guns and shit and need booze here, bitch. All right, obviously, I was an idiot um, in my younger days. When I, was, I went to the Philippines in the infantry in 2014, I would have been, what, 20 years old, I think, 21. I don't know. Young enough to buy stupid stuff like that. Here's a unit shirt for the 31st Mew. Um, this stupid dragon. Um, funny story about this dragon. One of our staff arms in the three. The cert major was very proud of that logo that they made, the dragon one here, and talked a lot about it. And just keep in mind, this is the 31st Mew, which is based out of Okinawa. And a quote I'll never forget is that Star Sergeant said, this is what happens when the Marine Corps stops killing people. This was like the transition into peacetime. Peacetime. Okay, this is, this is just, these are just red. There's nothing on the inside. This is a Korean winter uniform PT. Winter PT uniform, okay? Here's the shirt for that. Look at that, dude. Pretty cool. Pretty dope. Pretty dope. Got the Korean, the Rock Marine Corps logo there. Nice. All this stuff smells really bad, by the way. All right, all the draft t-shirt what we have here. Ah, the PSYOP shirt. Look at that. I don't think I've ever even worn this. That's the PSYOP logo, Persuade, Change, Influence. There we go. Maybe I'll keep that out and wear it one day. Let's see. I'll put that in the closet. Here's the Marine Corps issue beanie. Boonie. Beanie. Never lose this thing. Always have that thing on you, strapped. 
Okay, let me make some some real estate here. We'll just put all this stuff back at some point. Bam. Woo. So you would think this is flamboyant. I'm using that word specifically. Um, it's not. That's fishnet. It's a tank top. Um, this is a Philippine Marine PT uniform. You can imagine how hot it gets in the Philippines. And so this is what they PT in. Um, no. Well, actually, I did wear this in the barracks in Japan. Um, but when you're in the barracks and silkies and this bad boy, um, you can do whatever you want. Okay. All right. I think these are my, oh, these are my unit shirts here. Okay. This one is Advanced Mortarman Course. Hands down, one of the best and worst courses I've ever been to. Advanced Mortarman Course with that sick logo, if you can see. Okay. Um, dude, the amount of PT we did on that course was stupid. Sergeant of Marines, look at that. Nice. This we had to get for PME a professional military education course because I would never wear that ever in my life, ever. This is 24th Mew, baby. I left the Mew to go to Syria. That's the 24th Mew's t-shirt here. 2-4 Mew. Marine Expeditionary Unit. All right, watch this one. Please don't be something stupid. Corporal's course. Yep, Corporal's E from the front. See, really, really dumb. PME shirts. Um, I would rather, I would rather die. Seriously, die. Like sacrificing my kids is really, really close before wearing that shirt. Um, ooh, here we go. School of infantry t-shirt here. I was infantry in the Marine Corps. We got our 0311s, 31s, 41s, 51s, 52s. The grunt. There we go. Nice. I'm definitely, definitely keeping that one. Let's see. Oh, Cobra Gold. Thailand shirt here. Got from Cobra Gold. That's pretty thick. Almost. We are almost done. Here's the last of the last. Last of the few here. Camp Mujik, Korea. This will always have a soft spot in my heart because that's where I was in JP at. First run G, I'll say that from Two Night Echo. You can still suck a fat one, just so you know. Um, if you watch this, just so you know, if I see you in real life, it's on site. This is oh the Filipino or Philippine Marine close quarter collie. Their martial arts program that they use. Um, very, very, very heavy into weapons, specifically cool. knives. I don't even know what these are for. This is <sighs> good conduct. I'm probably keeping that one out of spite. Um, let's see. This is sergeant promotion warrant here. Um, there's probably PII in that, so I'm not going to show you. That's a... Oh, corporal promotion. I will show you this. This is from, this is a personal letter from my sergeant major at the time. He knew I had got NJP'd and when I became a psyoper, I really worked hard and he had, a, we had a, a, a pretty good relationship. Um, hands down, the best sergeant major I've ever had was Sergeant Major Reeves. So, kudos to you, big dog. Here's my Reenlistment, dude. Yep, I reenlisted. Is there anything PII on here? Nope. This is my enlistment warrant. Reenlistment. Okay, good times. Promotion warrants to corporal. Here's my advanced mortarman course and infantry course cert. Um, I will absolutely never looking at. I don't see anything. Uh, there are some PII. Okay. Just know that this was a Mortarman course, advanced Mortarman course, and entry course, and this is an empty one. I don't know what the heck goes in there. Um, whatever I want, really. But that's it. Okay. 
If you stay to the end of the video, let me know. I definitely want to know. No, I'm not going to wear this boonie all the time. Um, if you stay to the end, say something about your time in service. Let me know what one of your best memories are. Something I shared on YouTube, my community post. Today's July 4th. Um, I remember in Syria that morning, all I was on the already, I was attached to already at the time, and all of the guns raised their elevation, pointing almost straight up, and they all had American flags flying, all four of them, and it was just beautiful. I remember waking up, I was wearing silkies that morning, um, and waking up, going out front of the berm, we were sleeping in halls, and just it was such a just a weird feeling to get. Um, very patriotic. And we were right outside of Raqqa. This was during the battle for Raqqa in 2017. Um, later that day, we got delivered Odoodles, which is non-alcoholic beer. You can find this in the post too. Um, to keep them cold, something I remember as well, we put them in socks and tied them up from like the Cayman net netting. And if they were in shade, you throw water on them. And as the wind hits it, it cools it down, almost ice cold. And so we were drinking Old Doyle's and um, Thomas McDaniel, beautiful mustache, said, uh, he said, today's a good day. The sun's shining. We're drinking cold beer and killing ISIS. And I will never, ever, ever forget that quote. That's not paraphrased at all. Um, sad to say, and I had a video on the secret war about studies coming out of mental health and TBI specifically from that deployment. Thomas McDaniel would go to kill himself. So that's always sentimental to me. One of my favorite memories is with him and I'm grateful to have met him. And that dude is as American as they come. So respect to you and your family, McDaniel. That's all I got. Thank you very much.